Hey, Mark Dawes here. In this short video, I want to talk to you about gun disarming techniques. Now, this is something I've spoken about before, so there will be a link to a blog post beneath this video somewhere, um, because I've actually covered this in a blog post before, but I'm going to do a video on it again. Uh, but just look at this for a minute. See that, that tree there behind me, that yew tree? That yew tree is 2,000 years old. It was here when Christ walked the earth. It's amazing, isn't it? But the reason this video is important is if you want to be around for your kids and your family and you're thinking about going on a course to learn gun disarming techniques or you're thinking about teaching gun disarming techniques then you really really need to watch this video let's just think about weapon systems for a moment and particularly let's just talk about a nine millimeter pistol if you think about the fact that the bullet leaves that barrel at 1100 to 1300 feet per second that's equivalent to 820 miles an hour no human being on earth is fast enough to stop something traveling at that velocity, particularly if the gun is close to you. Now that brings me to the second point. A lot of these gun disarming techniques show people holding the gun in your back or to the back of your head and you've only got to click on a YouTube link and a whole host of these videos come up. The reality is if someone is pointing a weapon at you with a bullet velocity of 820 miles per hour, they don't need to be anywhere near you. They can be feet away, and you cannot move fast enough to disarm the person who's pointing the gun at you. Now, a lot of these gun defensive techniques actually came from the Fairburn and Sykes manual, the Get Tough manual, which was a manual produced for special forces, paratroopers, and commandos in the Second World War. Now, this is a classic picture that comes from that manual. As you can see, that shows a technique. And that technique has been replicated on videos and on courses time and time again as showing someone what to do because Fairburn taught it. But listen to this testimony from someone who was actually there. This is from Able Seaman Albert Catterall, Royal Navy Commando, G Commando Training 1941. This is what he says, and he was there, remember. He, Fairburn, was about 40 or 50 odd, and he threw us about like rag dolls. He gets a gun, bullet, Webley 45 and says to stick it in his back. Now when I move, you pull the trigger. Sodding mad he is, I thought. What I'm trying to demonstrate is you never push a gun into the enemy's back. You never get that close. So the man who was the expert in this actually was demonstrating something that should not be done, which is what I've just covered. But the fact is, is people who don't understand this are teaching this as a technique because they think that is the way it should be done. And that is bordering on negligence. Okay, here's something else I just want you to consider for a moment. A lot of people teaching this gun disarming stuff are claiming they're either ex-special forces or special forces or they've been taught by special forces. And the reality of the matter is, and I'm an ex-service person, and a lot of my colleagues who are ex-services and probably a lot of guys who are still serving will back me up on this stuff. There is very little allocation in a military training program, a close quarter combat or a close quarter battle training program for gun disarming techniques. And the reason is this. If someone on active service is finding themselves in a situation where they're expected to take guns off someone using their hands, they are not using their weapon systems correctly. Okay, let's look at this from a psychological perspective. The fact of the matter is, is when a gun is pointed at you, it is psychologically defeating. And what's going to happen is your heart rate is going to kick through the roof. It's going to be in excess of 200, maybe even excess of 300 beats per minute. In addition, the frontal lobe of your brain the bit you use for cognitive processing is going to shut down. You're going to have a frontal lobe lobotomy and you're going to revert back to using your limbic system, which is the brain of a two million year old ape. So, all these complex multi-move techniques that you're storing in the frontal part of your brain, the bit we use for creative thinking, is not going to be there for you when that gun is pointed at you. You're going to revert back to basic fight and flight response. Oh, I'm now standing in the grounds of St. Mary's Church on Hailing Island. It's a beautiful old church and there's still bullet holes in the wall behind me there from the English Civil War that, you know, from the days of Oliver Cromwell. But I brought you here for a reason. I mean, if you look around this churchyard, you'll see that it is actually covered in gravestones. And the point of this is, if you think a gun disarming technique is going to work, that's probably where you're going to end up, six foot under. Now, if you're Paying to learn this stuff, really rethink it. And if you're teaching this stuff, just think about what you're actually subjecting people to. You may be giving them a false sense of security and leading them on a completely misguided path that could result in them losing their life. But there's another reason if you are a trainer and you're teaching this stuff that you need to be aware of, and that's professional indemnity insurance, and I'll come on to that in a minute. I'm sat outside the United Reformed Church in South Hailing here, and this is the church that we brought Sam Childers to when he came to speak on Hailing Island a couple of years ago, the machine gun preacher that is, Sam Childers, in case you don't know that. Now, 
professional indemnity insurance. Now, a lot of you as instructors will have your public liability and your employer's liability insurance if you need that one. Uh, but you should also have professional indemnity insurance. Now, I've done a video on this a while ago. So hopefully there'll be a little iCard up there which will link to the video. I'll put it on as an end screen one as well. But the fact of the matter is, is if you are teaching stuff that is negligent, then someone can claim for what you teach outside the classroom. It also, you, you, they can claim against your, your professional indemnity insurance for stuff that you say. So if you give incorrect advice, uh, or you teach something incorrectly, and someone goes away and gets seriously injured or killed, then they or their family can actually sue you. But here's the thing, and I urge you to watch the video on this, okay? If what you've given, advice-wise or technique-wise, was incorrect, legally incorrect, flawed, likely to fail, then the insurer will do one or two things. They either won't pay out, so your insurance policy will become null and void, or if they have paid out, they will sue you for the money back. Now, obviously, I can't give financial advice on this stuff because I'm not a financial advisor, but I'd check that with your insurers. But click on the, on the link above, or wait till the end of the video, and go to that video and watch that one next. That's really, really important. And that's another reason why I have concerns about people teaching these gun disarming techniques, because I genuinely think they're giving people a false sense of security. And the fact of the matter is, and I've mentioned this already, if I point a loaded gun at you with a bullet up the spout and the safety catch off, it's a completely different experience than training with either a toy gun or a replica firearm or a blank firing gun. Okay, it's completely different. And I think that people teaching this stuff should be made aware of their particular liability. And if you, once again, are looking to go training in this stuff, to be trained to learn this stuff, then choose your training provider carefully. Now, you know, we've been around a long time and I won't teach anything where there is a liability in it and I won't teach anything that's legally incorrect or wrong and a lot of you that know me know that anyway. So please check this last bit out, your insurance out with your insurers.